Welcome to Lore's World. Tonight we're going to be talking to a friend of mine. Her name is Georgian. She is uh, one of my closest friends in recovery. I met her probably a year or two into recovery and um, we don't see each other every day. We don't talk every day, um, but we, uh, we do things together. If something's coming up or I, I want somebody to go to a movie with or um, Georgianne, you want to go to a meeting with me? I need a meeting. Um, and more recently, because of the pandemic, we haven't been able to, you know, go out to live meetings. But uh, sometimes I just shoot her a text and say thinking about you. And she does the same thing back to me. And um, just a wonderful human being, wonderful human being. And um, I can't wait for you guys to meet her. So. Let's go talk to Georgianne. But listen, I want to thank you so much for doing this with me. This is so great. This is so I'm so great. proud of you for starting this. I've been having a really good time doing it. It's been very, very therapeutic for me. You know, when I sat down with my girlfriend, Marsha, we had a conversation. We've known each other for over 25 years and we had a conversation that we've never had before, you know, and um, awesome. it's been great. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I asked you to do this with me because it was so funny. When I first got into uh, the rooms, I surrounded myself with all guys, <laughs> all the biker oh, guys. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I know you do. I, I didn't want to work on myself and guys don't really say anything to you, but I felt protected, you know, and I guess that's probably what I needed in the beginning. So for the first year, year and a half, um, yeah, all, all of my, uh, all of my peep, peeps were all the, you know, the biker guys. <laughs> So I felt really protected. Nobody come near me. And I remember walking into uh, a meeting up in Wolcott and you came walking in and I was like, <laughs> you know, and you didn't even say a word, but I am a true believer in that your energy introduces you long before you speak. And so my head flipped around, like your energy was just like, and it scared the shit out of me. I'm not going to lie because you were very like matter of fact. And I remember you sitting down at the table and um, you introduced yourself. But I remember you saying to me, you know, guys will pat your ass, but girls are going to save your ass. <laughs> and you need, you need to be called out on some shit if you're going to really work on, uh, on yourself. That was, that was beginning of our, uh, beginning of our little relationship. <laughs> That sounds like me. That was God talking through me. <laughs> I love it though, Georgie, and I love it. But listen, I want you to tell everybody just a little bit about your story and how you came in and how long you've been sober for and what, you know, what has worked for you and, and let's just have a little bit of a background if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. I love it. That's why I'm here. I um, carry my coin around with me all the time and it's, it's, um, 24 years now. My sobriety date is April 15th, 1996. I did come in a little bit before that. Okay. Um, about a year and a half before that. I don't remember the exact date anymore. That first year and a half, I went to a lot of meetings, um, but I knew that I couldn't drink anymore, but I thought that I could somehow find a way that just because I can't drink doesn't mean I can't have fun forever. <laughs> so I thought there was a way that I could finagle doing drugs um, and that I'd be able to handle the drugs. Okay. Because the reason why I got into doing drugs was so that I could drink more. Okay. Um, and I soon found out that I can't handle that either. <laughs> So what happened to me was at a really um, young age, all the adults around me drank. So I identified alcohol, alcohol as being very grown up. Okay. But I did see everybody's behavior change and I was never gonna be like them. I hated alcohol growing up. And I always, I'm the oldest of cousins on both sides okay. and the oldest of, um, I'm a bar kid, so we had a lot of picnics. Um, my dad owned a bar, and we had a lot of picnics and stuff, and I was the oldest, so I was always taking care of everybody. Always. Yeah, that was yeah, my yeah. thing. 
you know, and I think you can identify I with do. that. Oh, I do. Yep. <laughs> and especially being from an Italian family, it's what we do. Yeah, it's what we do. <laughs> Take care of everybody. <laughs> you know, it's what we do. Yeah. So I was, I, I grew up really fast um, and I was always taking care of everyone. And, uh, but I still had, um, you know, I was cute. Everybody was always, oh, she's so cute. Long blonde hair, you know, um, but everybody didn't know that I felt really um, not low self-esteem, insecure, very okay. insecure about everything because my world was always it was it was either um re really full of love or really full of anger and rage and everything it was either really really good or really really bad mm -hmm. in my house and I used to blame my parents for a lot of things I don't anymore because we all they did the best they could we always had a roof mm -hmm. over our head mm -hmm. we we always um had you know, clean clothes, a lot of food, you know, there's a lot, there was great holidays and stuff. So that's how I grew up. But as soon as I tasted alcohol and, and what it, what happened, I remember very, very clearly was, it was like, hello, mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you. It was like, hello, old friend. It was like something I've been waiting for forever because it went right through me. It made me feel instantly pretty beautiful like superwoman, just like people, everybody says taller, because I'm short too, taller, prettier, prouder, able to leap tall buildings in a single <laughs> bow. Yeah. I became I fearless yes. and I had arrived mm -hmm. and um, I threw up, <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't wait to do because it again. I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> I threw up, but I couldn't wait to do it again. Yeah because of that feeling that the first half hour, 45 minutes, because, you know, I, I didn't, couldn't handle it. My body couldn't handle it. Mm. I, I don't know. We, we used to mix it, I don't even remember exactly what it was, but we used to steal it from our parents' house. And then we used to mix, we used to call it jungle juice, but sometimes we mix it with Kool-Aid or ginger ale or whatever we had, mm -hmm. you know, and it would be um, vodka, Southern comfort, um, whatever they had in their cabinets. Mm -hmm um Canadian club whatever it was and uh that's how I grew up w went to Watertown High School and that's what we did we drank in the woods we had keg parties and all of that soon I became known as the girl that could chug all the guys under the table you know and that was my claim to fame um my girl can drink you under the table yay <laughs> <I'm so cool>. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <Yeah. laughs> but then <laughs> But yeah. then I discovered mescaline, which make you drink more. Okay. Um, acid make you drink more. Okay. And then cocaine came into my life, and it was no holds barred. My senior year, and from 18 to when I came into A the first time, I was 27. That's what I did. I I became a hairdresser and a bartender, and those two things together, you know, you could drink a um, little wine, do little lines in the back room and cut hair all day but then as soon as I got out I went to bartending and all all night long free drinks yeah. and cocaine wow. and I loved it I had a great apartment great car um all my boyfriends drove Harleys and Cadillacs and I was cool <laughs> well you still are cool <laughs> <laughs> I was so cool you know black leather jacket with the collar up and yeah. hair teased out to hair lipstick <laughs> the fingernails the whole nine yards but what became what was my best friend became my worst enemy because at the end I was hiding I had a drink um a few beers before I went out so nobody knew what I was how much I was doing you know my mouth started going like this and mm. I couldn't talk it was ugly it was really mm. ugly all the pictures when I'm like 25 24 25 26 I don't remember hardly anything in the pictures I'm really ugly Lori I look at that girl, I'm like, oh, I look better now at 53 than I did then. And you could tell I was a lost soul, sad, you mm. know, that feeling inside, like, mm. won't somebody please love me? Yeah. You know what I relate to a lot? Janice Joplin, um, Bette Midler in The Rose. Did you see that movie? Yes. yes, I did. When she's in the telephone booth trying to talk to her parents and they yes. hung up on her and she just falls down and says, where's everybody going? 
yeah. that scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hit, hit me. An Elton John movie when he's re, when he's removing his um yeah. I, I could start crying just thinking about it because <laughs> I, I so related when he's taken off his suit when he's in therapy and the suit's coming off. And then at the end when the little boy says, I, aren't you ever going to hug me? Or when, whatever, verbatim, yeah. I'm not sure the words, but when you're going to hug me. Oh, I was sobbing by then yeah. because that was me. Okay. It took years in AA for that to come out. Wow. It's all I ever wanted. And I drowned it. And I drank 24 hours a day, seven days a week because I had morals. I had all this growing up and I would wake up in the middle of the night and it would be there and and I'd be like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Cause yeah. I'd be like, what you do? Cause I was a blackout drinker. What you do? Yeah, Who'd too. you hurt? I was always fighting. I hated myself, Yeah, but I couldn't stop. Mm. It had me licked from the first time. I blacked out in eighth grade was my first blackout. I punched my cousin at a dance. I got suspended. And from there it was ugly. Yeah. I should have known in eighth grade, but I didn't have, it had gotten me already. Like, um, you know, I, that's why I love the big book so much because it describes us perfectly. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a real alcoholic, this, you know, this book will make sense to you. If you're not, you're baffled by it because other people, normal people don't understand us, but we help each other because we understand us. Yes. Yes. You know, and I always thought like even growing up, you know, I have a younger brother that um, you met and, you know, I always had this special bond with him and I couldn't understand why. And it's because we know each other's hearts because of right. that. You know, you don't, you don't have to say anything to somebody in, in recovery because we know each other's hearts. And I think that's, you know, that's what makes it so special. You know, when I, when I'm sitting in a meeting or something and somebody says, I, you, do you know what I mean? And it's like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> you don't, you know, I don't care that you're babbling. I know exactly what you mean. My very first meeting, it said, you're not alone. And mm -hmm. I always remember that yeah. because that's, I only wanted to be loved. Yeah. Somebody to please love me Yeah, and not be alone. And I had pushed so, I'm a big Al-Anon person too. Um, I, I didn't I, know that. Yeah, I didn't discover Alan on until I was like 10 years. Okay. And um, I went to a retreat and Sister Marie said, I'm giving you a prescription. Do not stop going to AA, but you need to go to Al Anon, honey. And she was right. I started working the Al Anon steps and mm -hmm. AA saved my life, but Al Anon saved everybody else around <laughs> me. <laughs> saved my relationships because I was That's so awesome. Sick. I did not know that. Yeah, I was so sick. And then when I got divorced, everybody I picked was or whatever. Mm. I mean, it was my fault, nobody else's fault, but I wanted to fix people and I wanted to help people, but I never helped me. Yeah. You know, that little lost little girl just was dying for some love and affection. And I kept giving it away. And, you know, I didn't get respect. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm I talking do. about as yes. a woman. Yeah. I didn't respect myself, so I didn't get any respect. Yeah. You know, I would, I, I, I know exactly what you were talking about because for, for some, for so many years, you know, I would do things for people that were total strangers, wanting them to like me, um, do something, you know, really nice for somebody, um, you know, sometimes ahead of my own family members. Um, and somebody would say to me like, what are you doing? And, you know, and I didn't know what I was doing. And then I realized later that, I didn't like myself very much. So if somebody else exactly. liked me, maybe it would be okay. You know, yeah. it would be okay. Why, why I was trying to get it from total strangers, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still a work in progress, you know? Um, but I do know boundaries now. Mm -hmm. um, I do know now um, doing this thing for, you know, almost 11 years that, you know, you know, what's good for you and who's good for you you could I feel it in my heart you I can feel, feel it. it feel it inside and when I'm trying harder than somebody else's then I know it's time to back off and I and I never yeah I never ever ever did that before I would just keep on going and going until it made me sick right and then I can't sleep and I can't eat you and you know somebody sick. would say to me like you know 
um, do you think so-and-so is sleeping right now? And I'm like, I don't know. Why am I putting all of this effort into it? Like and so when I started, you know, to sponsor people, if I'm working harder than you are on your sobriety, then it's time to back up. Right. Um, I had the same sponsor for a long time in the beginning and she was excellent. She loved me until I could love myself and that's what I needed. But then I needed, I needed someone to grow in the steps and with the steps. And when my first sponsor said it was after my um, miscarriage, which, oh, that, that was the worst. But anyway, that's another story. Um, and I had gotten so mad at God that I, I had a miscarriage and all this and that, but that Diane said to me, it's time now um, that, you, that you find a new sponsor. And I was so wounded by it, but it was what I needed. She did for me what I couldn't do for myself. God did for me what I couldn't do for myself. And then I found my Joni and she looked at me and she said, oh, honey, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> and I had done, I was a step sk skipper. I had done, you know, certain steps, but I never worked on six and seven. Okay. I didn't have any character defects. Of course see. not. <laughs> it's everybody it else's problem. problem. If you yeah. just treat me, if you just treat me right, I'll be okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. You know? <laughs> oh, girl. Oh, my goodness. But I then you got into the thick of it yeah. and the root of everything. And ah, oh, and I started doing some Al-Anon and did some Al-Anon steps and all of that and realized that I was a really sick cookie even before I picked up the drink. People aren't going to take care of me. I need to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's okay. I learned how to be discerning in my relationships. Okay. And it's okay to say no. And no is a full sentence. Yes. And you know, it's okay to stay home on a Friday night and watch some movies. I don't have to be in the thick of everything. Yeah, you it's know? nice, isn't it? It's lovely. It's lovely. You know, somebody told me a long time ago too, like, you know, loneliness and solitude, there's a very thin line, very thin line. So and perfect. I, I love my solitude. Me I love too. the alone time and I never wanted to be alone. I felt always lonely. Because I didn't like to be, I didn't like me. So I didn't want to be with me. <laughs> so it was like, I don't want to be alone. I don't, you know, don't let me be alone. And now, oh my goodness, I look so forward to it. It's so peaceful. It's so right. peaceful. And, and I'm such an empath too. When I was yeah. always, I was always the center of attention. I made myself be, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. you look at me. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> but I was always getting bombarded. And now I realized, like, I, I went to um, some wonderful schools, classes and stuff and honed my spirituality, if you will. And I also started a, a new meditation thing. And anyway, my spirituality is totally different than what it was years ago. My mom used to say, shh, don't talk about those things. Like when I would say, I dreamt about this one and then they'd call, I'd say, I told you, or I knew something was going to happen or whatever. Stop it. Yeah. That's crazy talk. Cause my mom's native American and all her family would drink that stuff away. All the women. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad is Polish and they're gypsies. Okay. And so I, yeah, I have it on both sides. It was always hushed, 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 Georgina. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. So now I'm living just in my own home. I don't have to hide anything. And I and I went to um, a beautiful, I found a beautiful school for it. And two, actually. And um, now it's what I do. You know, I, I don't do it full time. Okay. I wish I could, but one of these days, hopefully I will. But bringing that part out in me too has made me feel freer. Little a lot freer, a okay. lot freer, because people would say it was evil, and it's freaking not evil. <laughs> it's freaking not evil. <laughs> it's not evil. I do Reiki and stuff like that, and it's it's healthy. It's holistic. It's I, I believe in it. I, be I believe in all of that. I really do. But um, in in angels and spirits, and you know, I I believe I believe that. I really do. It's very peaceful.
It's me. very peaceful. That's what I was going to say because of the spirituality. When I got Joni, that's where I was going because I had been really big in church. And when all that happened with my new sponsor and stuff, I had to find a new spiritual path because when I got divorced, I was very big in church. I was the secretary baking pies and doing all this stuff and <laughs> and all of that. When the priests and the, them told me that when if you get divorced, you can't receive communion anymore. It was like my God was turning his back on me. And I was like, oh. it was so hurt. Mm -hmm. I was really hurt. Really, really. It was it was almost worse yeah. than giving up drinking and almost worse than getting divorced. It was like everything is stripped away from me now because I love that church. Mm -hmm. I love the rituals. I loved all of that. So I had to find something that was similar. So what I did was I still light my candles. Yes. And I still, um, I have Mary statues mm -hmm. all over and for instead of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now I do the trilogy of women, but I use St. Anne okay. for the crone. I use Mary for the mother and I use Mary Magdalene for the maiden. So okay. it still ties into what I grew up with. Okay. It's my own belief. Okay. I made my own. I like that. It's yeah. Beautiful. I just switched it a little bit around in my head so that it works for me because that Catholic God told me that I'm not good enough to go to church because I got divorced. I know. So that was a big, big, big thing for me. I, I purposely did not, I knew you started something new and I've been dying to know what it is. And I did not want to know until I saw you. So what do you okay. do? What do you, what are you up to these days? Two things that I did. I did all my Reiki up to masters and I did that a few years ago and okay. I love it. And so I can teach that and do that. And um, I just started getting people. It's like everything is falling into place since I got my business cards and my, um, see, now you get me all excited. <laughs> my website and my okay. Facebook page, everything. It took me a while because I'm like, I have no money. But every time I said I have no money, I would have no money. You have to say, money is there. Money's coming. You know what I mean? You have to do the... Yeah. Put it the up to the universe. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Because if you say I have no money, you're going to have no money. So anywho, and I learned how to channel the angels and the archangels and stuff. So I can in include that into my intuition and um, help people. And because um, I was already reading cards and doing pendulum and stuff, but I wanted a little bit more. Okay. So I really love working with women that have had trauma. Because I have um, been diagnosed with PTSD from past stuff. But I do healing of the soul. I do healing of the chakras. Whatever you need. We'll, yeah. just, let, we'll just let go to, so that you can get the stress between your shoulders gone. And it works. I have clients in England, Australia, Mexico. Oh God, that's awesome. It's so awesome. But it's wildflower soul. And it. I love it. I love it, it too. I love it's it. It's all about you. letting your letting your soul bloom. I love that. Oh my God. I oh my love God, you. Lori, I get chills just saying it. Oh my God. I am so happy for you. We're gonna have to have a little session, girl. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Yeah. I love you so much, honey. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. I uh, thank you for doing this with me i you have no idea how much i appreciate it and how thank you you I want are, to hug you so bad so i know we, we, and we will fun. i promise we we will do we will get together soon i love you yeah, thank Jim you McCann. so much for doing this with me love sweetheart and i will talk to you soon i'll be sending you a little good morning and adjust for today tomorrow <laughs> all right yeah i look forward to them every day they they really brighten my morning i love you thank you love honey. you too i'll bye, talk honey. to you soon okay okay, okay bye, bye.